Yeah. When we lived outside of the Twin Cities in Laconia, we could see the light like pollution from all over the area. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order for the Planning Commission. I worry about I have Is the sound on? Yeah. The guy I've heard. The soil not going to be the gravels. Yes. And I mean, I remember thinking it was him, but like it's on the maze from there. And if I stand in We'll call the meeting to order. See it in the winter through the trees. Can you hear me? Okay. 300, 400 feet. And the first order of business is to introduce our new members. We'll introduce all the members. Let's just have you say your name starting with Mike. I'm Mike Gisicki. And let's say where you're from, too. Greenwood Lake. Brad, Brad. Silman from Lutzen. Charlie Labota from Hovland. Judy Machenbacher from Lutzen. Linda Newman from Hovland. Paul Stucker from Hovland. Jeff Lee from Lutzen. Thank you. The first order of business is to elect the officers. We haven't had a quorum enough to, to do that, so we'll do it tonight. I can I just jump right in and make a motion? Sure. Motion that Judy be the chair. I if she's willing. I will. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Vice Chair. I'll make a motion to elect Charlie. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we have officers. And the, we'll approve the minutes from the March 8th meeting. Have you, are there any changes, corrections, additions? If not, I'll have a motion to approve the minutes from the March 8th meeting. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. <coughs> to approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. There was an app on for um, November 22nd meeting. You probably don't have it on there. I don't. So the, um, we need to. Meeting and say, uh, minutes from November 22nd. So. I'm sure we all remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the November 22nd meeting? I will motion to approve the minutes from the November 16th meeting, I believe it is. 16th of 2022. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. New business. Planning Commission bylaws, final draft. Sure. I'm looking for direction from the staff. Oh, the bylaws. Yep, yep certainly. So uh, we did a refresh on the Planning Commission bylaws. This is more so an, a complete overhaul. That's why you don't have a red line strike through version. Uh, it just kind of didn't make sense at the end of the day. It just we just restarted the whole new format. Um, so these bylaws have been distributed. I haven't received any uh, content-wise comments. Um, I think I had one comment about a citation in here that needs to get corrected. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's to this board to review these bylaws and decide whether you want to adopt them or if you want to amend them or if you like more time because we have some new members and they may not have had enough time to really go through them quite yet. So, it's the board's pleasure. Okay. What's your pleasure? Make a motion to adopt them. I've read them. So, I've read through them all. Okay. So the motion's been made to adopt them. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the White Pine Investment Company LLC requests for a conditional use permit. Neva. Thank you, Madam <coughs> Chair. This is a request for a conditional use permit for a four-site campground at Big Bear Lodge. The applicant's property includes 7.91 acres of approximately 430 feet of Poplar Lake shoreline. Mm -hmm. The parcel is contained entirely within the resort commercial residential zone district. Camping areas are a listed conditional use in the RCR zone district and Poplar Lake is classified as a recreational development lake. 
general project description. Chris and Allison Short proposed to add four site campground to the existing Big Bear Lodge Resort, which they purchased in August 2022. Each campsite will allow either a tent or small RV with up to four people with two vehicles and a trailer or four tents, one motorized watercraft or four non-motorized watercrafts such as canoes, paddle boards and kayaks. The campground is proposed to operate year round with quiet hours from 10 p.m. to 9 a.m. Electric hookups will be provided. There's already power in this location, so no generators will be allowed. The applicants propose to have an outhouse or vault privy installed and provide a picnic table and fire ring for each site. For zoning considerations, this property is located within the shoreland area of Poplar Lake and is zoned RCR. The principal purpose of this zone district is to provide for the specific commercial activity of resorts, lodges, and outfitters. Residential uses and limited service-oriented commercial uses are also allowed. I included a zone map on page two of the staff narrative, which will show the subject property outlined in blue shaded pink with adjacent properties zoned Lakeshore Residential and Forest Agriculture Residential FAR3 zone districts. I included the description of the various permitted and conditional uses on page three of the staff narrative. You'll see under conditional uses, itemized number one, lists camping areas, public or private, tent or vehicle, subject to all applicable state standards. I include the definition of zoning ordinance for a campground, which this activity does meet. And the proposed activity will not require a Minnesota Department of Health state license, as it is below the five unit threshold for uh, state uh, defined recreational camping areas. <coughs> Under the Cook County Land Use Guide Plan, uh, the future of the Gunflint Trail includes uh, the number of resorts, probably unchanged from 20 years earlier, although existing ones have expanded or are being enhanced. And a commercial goal uh, for Cook County is to provide commercial facilities to meet the needs of residents and visitors. Policy number 42 under that goal lists specialized commercial activity, for example, resorts, et cetera, that depend on and requires specific site conditions can coexist with residential and other land uses through the application of standards regarding screening from adjacent uses, traffic conditions, size and scope of the activity, and other similar concerns. I included in your, in your application packet the review standards. Decisions of the Planning Commission on all conditional and interim use permit applications shall be made according to the general requirements and criteria for such permits as listed in section 10.05 of the zoning ordinance. There's inserts from that section of the Cook County zoning ordinances on pages 23 through 25 of the larger packet. For backgrounds, the property is a part of Big Bear Lodge Resort. The previous property owners already cleared the land where the proposed campground is located with the intention to place a shop. Electric and vehicle access is already established to the proposed project site as well. For site conditions and considerations for septic, the applicants have reached out to Mitch Everson, the Cook County Environmental Health Officer, to di discuss sanitation needs of the campground. Mr. Everson indicated that an outhouse or a vault privy would be sufficient to serve these sites. As such, the applicants have indicated in their application that they intend to place an outhouse or vault privy up near the campsites. For impervious surface coverage, the area of the proposed campground has already been cleared and compacted. Minimal increase in impervious surface coverage will occur from this use. No wetlands are located in the area of the proposed project location. For slope, the proposed campground is at the top of a hill, which may increase the likelihood of campfire smoke, sound, and light from the campground to be more observable to other properties or the Gunflint Trail. There is a steep slope to get to the campground site, but the slope does not meet the bluff criteria. The driveway from Northwoods Loop and Gunflint Trail are already established. For noise, quiet hours and lack of generators will minimize noise from this use. However, it should be noted that the campground is high on the landscape and noise may travel easily. For lighting, there are minimal details in the application, but uh, the applicant has provided an addendum that I'll get to in a moment. For safe access, access is already available off of the Northwoods Loop and Gunflint Trail. It would be preferable for the Gunflint Trail access to be for emergency only and direct main traffic from the site to the site from the Northwoods Loop. And parking will be provided at each campsite. We noticed the application in the Cook County News Herald on January 27, 2023. 32 letters of notification were sent to adjacent property owners as well as county departments and the Cook County Coalition of Lake Associations. One, a memo was included from the Cook County Highway Engineer in the packet. We received one written common letter submitted by John Butto. He's the neighbor that's closest to campsite number four. 
with specific concerns related to campsite number four due to its close proximity to his private property. During the March 8th uh, public comment period, Biz Clark was present and she had provided verbal comments in support of the application. She was favorable to the request because she thought it was a nice uh, addition to the operation. Uh, for staff recommendations for considerations, generally in that paragraph I list two items to be discussed, which is campfires without pressurized water up there and also outdoor lighting. To this point, the applicant has used this time uh, since this application and packet was first put together to provide an addendum, which I did hand out to you at the beginning of this meeting, and I'll read it out for the record. Uh, with regards to staff recommendations for consideration, uh, from the applicant, multiple efforts made to contact Cook County Firewise staff have been unable to connect with anyone due to no staffing in that department currently. Big Bear Lodge currently has a yearly fire extinguisher program with Northland Fire and Safety. We've reached out to them and they will be providing one 20 pound fire extinguisher that will be located centrally within the campsites next to the outhouse building. This extinguisher will be on our yearly maintenance program with them. We will also be providing a 35 gallon potable water storage tank centrally located within the campsites next to the outhouse building. Each site will be provided with a bucket and instructions to extinguish their recreational campfire after each use. While the campsites are located on a ridge line, it is heavily protected with an existing vegetative buffer from both the Gunflint Trail and neighboring properties. The vegetative buffer on the ridge line provided fire extinguisher and provided potable water and buckets should help mitigate risk. And then to the point of outdoor lighting, they state outdoor lighting that will be provided is a single exterior light on the outhouse building. This will be downcast. I did include some uh, potential conditions for approval uh, <coughs> given the considerations of the request. Um, number one, existing vegetative buffer between Gunflint Trail and the campground shall be maintained to provide a visual buffer to the campground activities. Uh, I think number two, we can reword that description uh, based upon the applicant's revised plans for the campfire plan. Um, and then campground access shall be primarily provided from the Northwoods Loop Road. The Gunflint Trail access shall be reserved for maintenance access or emergency access only. And all outdoor lighting shall have a minimal footprint, be downcast and shaded to mitigate any impact to the Gunflint Trail or neighboring properties. And then item five is any other conditions the applicant suggests to address any concerns that the Planning Commission may have. Thank you. Is someone here to represent the White Pine Investment Group. Would you come forward and state your name and address? Right here. Yep, the microphone is there. Can I sit? Sure. Or do I need the microphone? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Short. Me and my wife, Allison, we're the owners of Big Bear Lodge. Um, I just want to hint on a couple of things those five conditions that uh, Neva talked about a little bit, just to give you a little bit more background on it. Um, the first one with the vegetation on the Gunflint, we definitely plan on maintaining it. They cleared this site 30 years ago, so the vegetation has come back great, both along the Gunflint and along Northwoods Loop. So there's tons of vegetation. This little campsite spot up there is kind of just really self-contained up there. Um, second thing with the uh, campfire issues, um, Neva talked about our plan that we have in place with that, and that was based on some talks with her not being able to get a hold of the, the FireWise program. Um, you know, with the addition of fire extinguishers, which we already have all over the property, we're on a yearly maintenance plan with them. We'll stick with that. Um, they already were aware of it. They've heard of stuff like this before, so they were in favor of the idea of a fire extinguisher up there. And then also the, the potable water and buckets, we do that on the property already at all of our cabins and lodge room locations. So it would just stick with the current theme and how we already present it in all of our check-in packets and we give them tutorials and everything. Um, and then the third one with um, the campfire access from, um, or the campground access from Northwoods Loop Road. I mean, we'll leave that up to you guys. We currently do have both accesses from the Gunflint and uh, Northwoods Loop. Um, so we'll let you decide that. In terms of lighting, Neva talked about that too. Um, the whole property right now, we do very minimal lighting. We're huge in favor of the dark sky. Um, so all we would want to do is put one light up on the outhouse so people could safely get there, you know, in the middle of the night if they have the need to go. Um, and then the fifth one with just uh, some other comments, I wanted to address um, our one neighbor did um, reach out and he put a letter in there that Neva put in there. 
Um, I wanted to talk about a little about the campfire, the sparks, and the smoke that he um, mentioned in his. And I did print this out that I'll give to you if you can share it. Um, he talked about the campfire ring and the proximity to his property. And on the map, I show where we already have four campfire rings that are actually closer to his property already. So in terms of proximity of a campfire, you know, this would be fifth closest to his property. Um, and to our knowledge, there's never been an issue with it. We've never had any complaints, everybody we've talked to. Um, so being the fifth you know, closest one now, it doesn't seem to be too big of an issue on our end. Um, and then also with where we're at up on that ridge line, and there's talk about the height, which it is higher, but with the really good growth that's already been there forever and the fact that we're not touching anything, it's quite secluded up there. And with the prevailing winds, the way they blow from east <coughs> to west, um, tip, you know, that would be going across his property and into ours. So really any kind of smoke and anything like that should be leaving the property going the other way. Um, and then also I know you mentioned something about some noise and potentially our gas and stuff. Um, and on the same map that I'll give Neva, there's already two really good buffers um, to his property. From up on the campsite location, it's very, very hard to see his property. I mean, even in the winter, you can pick out a little bit of a roof line, but most of the year it's, it's non-existent. You can't see it. And then with the fact that we have our quiet hours in place around the whole resort, which they've always been, and once again, we've never had an issue, and this campground would have the same quiet hours, um, just don't see too much of a, an issue with that as well. So any questions for me? Okay. Good. We, if we run into one, we'll ask you back. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak to support? the conditional use permit? Is there anyone here to sp speak opposition? Would you like to step to the microphone, please? Hi, I'm John Fredrickson. Uh, I live up on Gunflint Lake, uh, 230 South Gunflint Lake. Um, I, we, my wife and I support uh, this application. We think it's a good, good use of the space. Um, Chris and Allison haven't been on the trail very long, but they've already become very good neighbors to folks, and uh, they seem very conscientious about kind of how to run run their business. Um, it's well within what uh, what it's zoned for and traditional use of the, of the space. Um, and they're you know small mom and pop operators who are going to be on site. It's not like they're going to be you know remote owners who are off site and they're going to be noise problems. Yeah. They'll be there to deal with it right away. So we definitely support their their application. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Can you step step to the microphone, please? Good evening. Good evening. I'm Donnie Kopp. I uh, live on Poplar Lake just down the road from the Big Bear Lodge. Uh, since Chris and Allison have taken it over, the work and time that they put in that place to turn it around and like was mentioned before, the kindness of being neighborly is just phenomenal. I mean, for a young couple to take on this type of venture in today's world is, it's refreshing. Uh, I've had several occasions to talk to some of their clientele, and this idea of a smaller campground, I've had more than one person tell me they'd like to get into the canoeing thing, but they're not quite ready to go full time, and they were really excited about this deal. So, with businesses in Grand Marais and the Gunflint Trail, especially around the mid-trail area, most of them are closed. These guys are open right now except for tonight because they're here. Okay. And you know, that says a lot. They've had uh, a lot of people all winter long where a lot of places have been closed, you know, so that's nice for the economy. It's good for, I think, everybody in the area. And I give it a big thumbs up. Great, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Do you want to step to the microphone, please? <clears throat> uh, Jim Jones, uh, 57 Fireplace Road, which is just down the road from uh, Chris and Allison. And I just wanted to reiterate everything that John and Donnie said. These guys have made such improvements there, and they are just the nicest people that are concerned about not only their business but a good balance between 
their neighbors, um, the Gunflint Trail. Um, it, we have nothing but, Linda and I have nothing but positive things to say about these guys, and they would not make a decision, in my opinion, that would, that would harm anybody. So I am just, uh, just wanted to voice my support. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay, we'll close the public comment and we'll talk to the Board of Planning Commission. Anybody want to make a motion? Do we want to um, state something about small RV? Put a size on it. Small is pretty general. Could cause trouble. Okay, that's a question you have. What do you think, planning? So we're looking at conditions. I, uh, <clears throat> I did a site visit and uh, looked at both of the access points, both the one off of the uh, off the gunflint and the uh, the one off the Loop Road. The one up off the Loop Road is uh, is rather steep, and uh, I think that leaving, and I also looked at it from a sightline perspective of accessing the highway itself. And the east entrance of the Loop Road is arguably more difficult than this would be uh, mm -hmm. in terms of having a curve right there. It doesn't, it's a ways down the road from, from where their, their access point is off of the gun point. Uh, it's also not as steep the access to the gun from, trail from the gun flint trail so I'd, they have brought it up but i'd be concerned about people tearing up the hill going up there calling an rv up there um, get okay. traction and so forth but uh and what kind of problems that could cause so the the access in and off the gun flint trail um this is there and this goes to your question about RV length, right? Because mm -hmm. if he's going up a steep hill and he's making a sharp curve, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have to necessarily keep it a bit shorter because, you know, we had. Okay. Um, if it gets long and doesn't take much of a, of a hill to, to cause a problem where things are going to be dragging. Right. So uh, a length of <coughs> RV? Trailers are you had up there already are 25 feet. Yeah, 24 is the one that's, that's our personal one that's currently just getting stored up there. Okay. How do you feel about that? Is that too big? Is it just right? Is I mean, I think it's just right. Um, we wrote small in there because we, we don't want to <coughs> allow large ones up there. Um, not necessarily because I don't think the hill can handle it or anything. It's just we just don't want to be a big campground and we're just trying to limit the small numbers and so that's where that whole kind of for me, that was more reference to just the size of the campground versus like the actual accessibility of it. I just, I'm aware that people think small, there's different <coughs> ways to think about it. So I was just was considering putting a length on it or, Not but it exceed. sounds to me like you're into this and you're gonna, you're gonna tell them that you can't bring that thing in here, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, obviously when you book too, you have to let us know how many people, you know, dog, be length of trailer just like any campground ask you all those questions and I mean we wouldn't allow one that's longer because all that's going to do is cause us a headache I'll end up having to back people's trailers in or get them unstuck so um, you know two people in a 24 footer versus two people in a 30 footer I mean we take the two people in a 24 footer all day and so that's where the idea is small you know I, I guess I don't know how to correlate you know if we pick a number or not what do you I, think? Should we pick a number? Say 24 is the max? Or? I would allow, I don't know. I think that's a little Somebody restricting. Somebody comes in with a 25. <laughs> <laughs> but Madam Chair, I also did. I just did, don't want you to get in trouble. <laughs> Madam Chair, I also did a site visit and I saw the same thing. Um, and I guess we need to decide if we want to put that limit on. It sounds like uh, they're pretty reasonable business people, so I don't know that we need, I personally don't think we need to put a yeah. restriction. I would. I would suggest that we don't need a restriction based on the applicant's answer and and just the basic site conditions that are there for what we're approving. It's just not going to be feasible for them to get a really large RV in there. I don't think we need to add an additional. And I need to ask this. the question: Is this an interim permit, or is it a? 
conditional use permit? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This is a conditional use permit request. And would it run with the property? Correct. Thank you for mm -hmm. making that point. So when we look at conditional use permits requests, let me just give a little general overview, is that conditional use permits stay with the property and they transfer with the property. So when you're considering conditional use permit requests, we want to think of conditions that capture the essence of the request and what you're reviewing, because keep in mind that these owners and operators are responsible and good business people, but someday they may not own that property and it's gonna to transfer to somebody else and that permit will transfer to another operator. I agree that these site conditions probably do have a natural limitation to what size of structure, but I think Planning Commission member Gieseke is correct and the term small is kind of ambiguous and that's difficult for staff to enforce if there's issues in the future. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind anytime you're looking at a conditional use is that it transfers with the property. So we have to think beyond the current operators of that resort. Can anybody get this permit and operate it the same way under the same conditions? With that, I would suggest uh, not to exceed limit on the length of a vehicle. Because circumstances always change. Right. So. I would say we could probably come up with like a 25 foot limit and if it's a problem we can sure address it later right yeah well if it's if it's a problem that they want 30 or they they need 30 feet they if we put a limit on it's a non-issue if we don't it can be stretched to 36 feet buses. Are you talking about single units or combination units? Uh, towing an RV or a, I'm just talking or about a small RV camper. Um, what are what the small going to mean? Because the combination is so. I think we right. need to get into more specifics before we would add a add a limitation. So you're talking about the truck or the yeah, I mean, that's that's part of the unit. That's part of the space that will be taken up. I mean, but once it that's part of the vehicle yeah, that's, that's coming true. in there. Yeah. So, sorry, man. <laughs> uh, so each spot does have room for the trailer and vehicle, like, unattached. So uh, the idea of, like, the trailer laying and the vehicle lane, it's not like they're going to be connected as one long unit once up there. Like there's ample parking where they would become disconnected and then have additional parking for the vehicle. Um, so the, and then going back to the lane, you know, ours is 24 and we brought up there with the truck and that was no issue. <coughs> so 24 to me would constitute small. Um, if I had to put a number on a length, if we could get to say 27 and feel comfortable, because that's a very standard trailer RV size, you know, that's 20 helpful. to 26 just kind of is like one number short of a very standard thing. Okay. So something like that just for some suggestion. Thank you. Okay, we need to um, get a motion and a second and then have discussion and talk about conditions. I make a motion to approve. What are you talking about? The conditions or the? Well, we need a motion with motion the conditions. First. With conditions. That we want to put on if we want conditions. Do we need to discuss those conditions first and then make a motion? We can. Do we want to go one through five? Well, five is any other conditions, so. If we agree with one through four, and then put five <coughs> as the length of recreation vehicle not to exceed 27 feet, that would probably be a good set of conditions. I, I do believe we need to adjust the wording of condition two okay. uh, in some uh -huh. way. Okay. Yeah, I, um, you know, when I read this recommendation, I was struck by the idea that that uh, we'd be 
putting um, limits on, on outdoor fires and campfires at a campground. There isn't a campground in this county that doesn't have a fire ring. And uh, the state and county campgrounds, national campgrounds, do not provide fire extinguishers or water buckets, right? And there isn't anybody there at some of these unattended campgrounds to tell people what they should do and what they expect their conditions to be. They have an onboarding package right. for customers. So they're well, far exceeding what we, right. you know, normally ask for. Right. And this is, you know, the owner wants the benefit of a fire extinguisher and water <coughs> on site, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh -huh. so, right. And it's easier to say they made me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, um, but the. Um, so number. Yeah, I, I would <coughs> support number two as currently stated. Oh. Okay. I still need a motion. Uh, okay. Motion to adjust the conditions. To approve the conditional use permit with the following conditions. And that's these and five here. Are. And we're going to change five to 27 foot length on the RV. Not to exceed. Correct. Not to mm -hmm. exceed. Everybody in agreement? I uh, make a motion to approve it. Okay. With those conditions. Is there a second? No, Sorry, we're holding two. Of pressurized we water. To to yeah, we have to adjust. The condition two. two Okay. It says without an excess of pressurized water, and they're not offering that, but I think they've already offered more than we find. So take in other out. Places. We'll be utilizing it in the. Demonstrate adequate fire prevention methods, period. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that, yep. too. I agree with that. Okay. Sure. He doesn't want to burn his campground down. No. <laughs> All right. So motions made with those conditions. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? No. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. There Madam you go. Chair, what was the terminology for the corrected condition number two? I couldn't hear it. The period at the end of uh, prevention methods. The rest of it is struck. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we'll move on to Ryan Thompson <coughs> requests for a 10-year interim use permit for the extraction and processing of aggr aggregate material. May I, before we get into that, can I get that copy of the master Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item is a 10-year interim use permit request for the extraction and processing of aggregate material, primarily dirt, on five acres at 21 Pine Mountain Road, Grand Marais. The applicant's property includes 28.92 acres. The property is entirely contained within the FAR3 Forest Agriculture Residential Zone District. The Cook County Zoning Ordinance allows extraction and processing of sand, gravel, and other minerals in any zone district with a conditional or interim use permit. The project area is a non-shoreland area. The applicant, Ryan Thompson, is requesting a 10-year interim use permit to allow the extraction and processing of aggregate material on the western portion of his property at 21 Pine Mountain Road. His on-site sampling indicates the material to be extracted will compose of dirt primarily to be used for landscaping and potentially septic mound cover material. He estimates this activity will take place for approximately 10 years. This property is located within the FAR zone district. The principal purpose of the FAR 3 zone district is to provide for the permanent and seasonal areas at me medium density. Farming and other rural activities are also allowed. Uh, I did include a list of the permitted and conditional uses for the FAR 3 zone district between pages one and two of the staff narrative, as well as a map of the local zoning patterns of that region. On page three of the staff narrative, I included a red box to try to indicate the location for the proposed activity, as well as a little sh blocked in red box a little further north of that, that's trying to indicate the location of a newly built residence that doesn't show up on that aerial imagery due to the date of that imagery being taken. Okay. 
Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I also wanted to add that the extraction and processing of sand, gravel, and other minerals are allowed as a conditional use in any zone district per section 10.03B8 of the Cook County Zoning Ordinance. And they have special criteria and requirements for those uses under section 10.06. The Cook County Land Use Guide Plan does include uh, some details about commercial facilities, about location-specific commercial activities, such as gravel pits, must be cited on an individual basis with accompanying standards to protect adjacent land uses. I included a few other excerpts from the Cook County Land Use Guide Plan in the packets between pages four and five and six as well. The review standards uh, for the Planning Commission on all conditional and interim use permit applications are included in the packets. And for background, Mr. Thompson worked to subdivide his property between 2006 and 2013 to create the parcels as shown on today's zoning map. This subdivision created parcel IDs 53-230-4130 and 4135. The shared driveway that serves these par parcels was originally proposed to be the access route for the gravel pit. There have been changes since this uh, narrative was put together and the applicants first submitted this application. Because we had that month delay, Mr. Thompson had more time to reconsider his access route and that was sent out to you and is included as an addendum to this packet. Um, the subject parcel also includes the Pine Mountain Residential Trailer Court, which is owned and managed by the applicant. For wetlands, a wetland delineation was completed for the subdivision. The wetland map has been provided to Mitch Travis, the Cook County Wetland Specialist, for his review. The wetland delineation can be reviewed and potentially reapproved once growing conditions are available. The new access route does cross the delineated wetlands. Because this is non-shoreland area, there's a 10,000 square foot de minimis, and that wetland crossing will be less than what that allowable uh, maximum is. So that's within what's an allowable impact area. For slope, the project area is relatively flat. For noise, noise is likely to be generated from this activity. The applicant has proposed operating hours Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. for screening activity. Lighting, the applicant does not clarify which outdoor lighting might be used for this project. Given the hours of operation, lighting may not be necessary, but it should still be discussed and clarified, potentially added as a condition of approval if necessary. For safe access, again, like I already indicated, that section of the staff narrative needs to be updated with that new plan that's been provided. Uh, for invasive species management, this would be monitored by the operator to ensure the materials aren't contaminated and further spreading invasive species. There's a memo included with your packet from Tia Parks, the Cook County Environmental Specialist and County Ag Inspector. For public noticing, the application was legally noticed in Cook County News Herald on February 10th, 2023. 25 letters of notification were sent to adjacent property owners as well as the residents of the trailer court, Cook County Departments, and the DNR hydrologist. The, for exhibits and attachments, the Cook County Soil and Water Conservation District did provide it a technical memo regarding restoration options. As additionally, the Cook County Highway Department's Environmental Specialist and County Ag Inspector provided a review and will assist the property owner with invasive species management. One written comment was submitted from the adjacent property owners, Rick and Cindy Crawford, north of the project area. Their primary concern is access to the site and they ask that alternative access options be considered so that trucks are not regularly using their shared driveway access to the residential property. Uh, during the March 8th Planning Commission public hearing, John Anderson and Rick Crawford both spoke against the request. They cited close proximity uh, to residential properties, access through shared easement and other pits being in the area for reasons being opposed to the request. Um, I also received two late written comments that were after the original March 1st written comment deadline that were not included in the record. For staff recommendations for consideration, this project is a private operation enacted by a property owner with equipment but may be challenged by the process enabling restorative repairs to the landscape upon completion or monitoring of invasive species during operation. To these items, the landowner has reached out and established plans with the Cook County Ag Inspector and Cook County Soil and Water Conservation District to prepare himself for these technical aspects of the project. Traffic on the shared easement, um, dust and noise are likely to be the more significant impacts. So instead of shared easement, 
um, I think under consideration to this location, the proximity to residential properties should be considered. Uh, the locality of this proposal does include several residential uses from the trailer court residences and the newly constructed residential dwelling to the north. Uh, the Planning Commission should further discuss this consideration and consult with the applicant to see if he has you know, any ideas to address some of these concerns, which obviously has already come forward with some of that. Uh, staff recommended the Planning Commission review the criteria outlined in Article 10 of the Zoning Ordinance to evaluate this proposal that is included with the packet. I included a number of conditions that could be considered uh, to address any potential mitigating issues for this request. And the applicant is here tonight. Thank you. Would the applicant wish to come to the microphone and speak? I'm Ryan Thompson, and I don't know what else I could really add what, what Neva just got done saying, except the screener that I'm going to use would fit right in this area here. It's really small. There's, it doesn't make a lot of noise. It just vibrates. It's no, there's no shaking or anything. There's just a vibrating screen on it. I've got a little case backhoe loader that I'm going to use to to work with and uh, I got an old uh, D6 cat that I'm going to use and as far as ingress and egress I'm changing that so it doesn't it doesn't affect any of the road that Crawfords were talking about and this will be totally separate from that so there'll be no impact on the the road that I do have ingress and egress on that road, but I'm going to change it just to work with Crawford's is what I want to do. And like Neva said, I've, I've talked to all the agencies that I possibly can, and I've got approval from everybody, you know, as far as all the, the DNR uh, wetlands. I talked to Mitch Travis about that, and he's he looked at the maps I gave him, and, and he wants to come and look at it. and after the snow goes so we can see what's going on and uh, he from what I've told him and what he's seen on the maps he has no problems whatsoever with anything and there my ingress or the way I want to come into it is part of an old existing forestry road that I'm just going to follow that except one little spot I got to go around Crawford's uh, pin in the ground for the property and I just make a little road around that and I won't it'll be totally on my property only okay it's not a big outfit. I just want to make some screen dirt and maybe sell some and make a few bucks. That's all I'm looking for. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and this is an interim permit that does not go with the property. Yes, correct, Madam Chair. So the difference from the conditional use permit that we had previously is an interim use permit uh, is null and void upon the transfer of properties. So under this permit, the Pine Mountain Trailer Court uh, which is owned by Ryan Thompson, is the only operator that could have this permit. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone that wishes to speak in support or opposition to the interim permit? And the Crawfords and Anderson have put in the record their comments from before. Okay, we'll close it to the public comment and we'll move to the Planning Commission. Questions, uh, Madam Chair. I did. Uh, I did a site visit, and the only only concern after uh, listening to uh, Mr. Thompson right now, the only concern that I have is a safety one with regards to how close the new driveway is going to be to the to the um, closest structure in the trailer park. Okay, and how close? Well, we uh, I discuss uh, during the site visit. I discussed with him. Uh, he was thinking it would be no less than 50 feet and I just want to hear what everybody thinks about that and is that is that uh, from a safety standpoint what does everyone think anyone else it did look like it's pretty close it, he does but it's there's still safety <coughs> issues it, that are unrelated to his ownership Such as? Uh, well, uh, when I was speaking with him, he said on a busy day there might be five to seven trucks a day, and mm -hmm. I'm just thinking if it's really close to the to one of the to the trailer um, structures and there are little kids and things like that, that would be a concern for me. Okay. I just wanted some more specificity than just a sure. general safety. I haven't been through there on my snowmobile, but I haven't gone through them. 
like to look at it in that way. I definitely appreciate the concern of that. I think the volume of trucks is probably low enough, and I think, um, you know, the proximity to of the trailer cart to the Devil Track Road is, I mean, I, I think, I don't want to say this, I think people need to be, have some responsibility too. Sure. Uh, as sure. far as their own safety and not, not be on that road mm -hmm. um, to some extent. I, I don't know quite how to word that, but I'm, I guess I understand what you're saying, but I don't think it's it should be too big a concern given okay. the scope of the operation he's proposing. Okay, and you don't think it's too densely um, residential in this area for this particular use? Uh, given the limit of a of two acres open space at a time, uh, it's 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 a relatively small operation. So. Sure. Okay, um, I was talking to Linda the other day, and I did tell her for about 50 feet or so, but it's it's more like a couple hundred feet to the nearest trail. And there's a big bank there that where nobody is going to you can't, it's, you can't just run off the road and hit a trail. I mean, there's a lot of protection there. I would assume that it's a road that you wouldn't be going 60 miles an hour on either. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, maybe you can. I know. Any other comments? Um, Madam Chair. Yes. I don't, I don't, a co question made me a little bit more process. You know, as I looked at um, extraction of processing subject to the following conditions, is that staff's um, role to determine if the application is complete? Um, because I, I did have some concerns there, you know, as I read, read the requirements, um, Mr. Larson did a good job with looking at vegetation restoration and so on, but I didn't really see a post mining topography. The applicant talks about a thousand cubic foot per foot of depth, but how deep is this pit going to actually be? during the process and what does it look like when it's done. Um, and I defer to staff because they review the application, but I would having some pretty extensive experience in mining yeah. permitting over the years, I think some, it may be somewhat. And this might be a time to set aside a couple septic sites because when you're done mining, I'm assuming it might be suitable for a home site. So, I don't know. I haven't even planned that, but, but if you dig up the septic sites, <coughs> then they're disturbed and you can't use them. I've seen that happen. And so if you designate a couple areas for septic sites right now, they're there. And uh, otherwise, it's just going to be a field. Yeah. But, you know, we're not going to put a condition onto that. That's your choice. So. Okay. And, and I, I would say, and I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Jeff. 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 Um, condition eight does state that state a, a depth limit, which would be the water table. Um, mm. That's what I got out of it. Madam Chair, do we table. know the depth of water at this location? Shut it down right away. Madam Chair, um, so the magnitude of this proposal is one reason that perhaps the technical data coming with the application isn't quite as robust as we would expect for a larger extraction activity. So that's that's kind of, we at the staffing level, we kind of make that determination. And then if the Planning Commission chooses that you want more <coughs> technical information, you can make that determination tonight. Um, so I kind of made that judgment call given the size and scope of this request I felt that we had enough to work with to get started um, The depth of the water table I think with that nearby wetlands is indicative of that um, I don't have a topography map in front of me, but it's not a lot of depth There's not a lot of topography on this site. This really is a pretty limited site by the capacity and amount I think as long as topsoil is being reserved for restoration activities afterwards um, it's not going to see a tremendous amount of use I think it's really the septic mound cover material that Mr. Thompson's been trying to um, get availability created for okay 
My main question when I was looking at this, I guess, is yeah, about scale and scope of the operation, and I might defer to Charlie's expertise. I mean, I, I see space limitations, but thinking about its proximity to the residences, does that, you know, five to seven trucks a day max feel like it's in line, you know, thinking just about how much traffic there's going to be? In Yeah. And maybe that's hard to say, but I, that that was the missing piece to me was like, you know, hearing the neighbors' concerns, how much traffic is there, the proximity mm -hmm. to the trailer court, and and I guess I don't know if it's, I would wondering if it's appropriate if I ask the neighbors a question. Is that reasonable, Madam yeah. Chair? I don't think they're here. They're here. <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ask the neighbors a question. <laughs> I mean, I guess when I read your letter, I saw the road as the primary concern. And and with the moving the road and the new proposed road, did that capture at least some or the majority of your concerns? Oh, I'm just, Ed, you, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. I just was <laughs> trying to address your concerns in some way, and I think... I, it appears the applicant has has right. made well, a significant yeah, so effort to stated that we weren't we, if we would have known this was going to happen we would have pushed our house back further mm -hmm. we we thought it was going to be another house beyond us and we didn't care that neighbors were blown past us mm -hmm. so that was that was the big concern that the big trucks went back and forth all day long i mean i guess that was one of the options you know that we did we did talk to Ryan before, and we didn't know if you were going to let him do it. You know, we're fine with his smaller operation. We just don't want twenty to thirty trucks coming through yeah. a day. Well, and that'd be. I mean, I don't. I you mean, guys obviously have a lot of experience with what the scope of this is too. So that's, I just wanted to get a feel for what you're. Right. How you're feeling at the moment. So. Do you have anything else to say? I mean. He's the only one that can use it, that's fine. We don't know where we're gonna be in three, five, seven years down the line. We have to sell our house, so we don't lose value to it. I mean, if it's a small thing, if you guys keep it a small thing, then we won't. You know, there's already a road that's actually there where he is proposing, it's an old forestry road. Yep. We even said that to him, throw a couple culverts across and go across it. You know, I mean, it's still on the one corner where he's coming through. I mean, we have, we're trying to get a buffer going there. So, are you fine with it? <laughs> I, think, uh, I mean, that part of that it was, is fine. Yeah, I just wanted to. It's just the other spot is 40 feet. Because he'd have, it's not opened up right now. Mm -hmm. He'd have to open it up and where the existing easement is right now would bring that right up to my front door. Yeah. So, and we knew it was there, and we were gonna work with the, whoever purchased that property, if he was to sell it to, you know, can we scoot your 20, the 50 feet, the 25 feet this way, so that's not as close. It was just the best place to put our house at the time. Thank you. Okay. How far, what is the side yard set back on this operation? That's what I'm thinking. Okay. <coughs> That's for the pit itself. Mm -hmm. That's yes. 50 feet from his property line. From our, pro our property lines are the joint right property next line to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So then you have the other 25 So it's 50 feet. feet. 50 feet. For the structural side. Yeah. Yes, for sure agriculture is supposed to be 25. I've done 50 as a standard. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions from the Planning Commission? Or there was a note on lighting. I wonder if there's any consideration to lighting, if you have any thoughts about if there's going to be any lighting with the operation. No, there won't be because it's supposed to fit at 5 o'clock. Right. Okay. I would say the other thing is, is that he's not going to likely be mining when it's, we're in the shorter days. Right. <laughs> <Frozen>. <laughs> Difficult. 
I guess my one other question for Applin is, is, is you are comfortable and you understand the 16 conditions that are proposed? You're comfortable with those conditions? You're comfortable with the 16 conditions as they're written. You, you feel like you can operate within that. Okay. Okay. We could put a 25 foot side yard, additional 25 feet on the side that's closest to the Crawfords. So the forest agricultural requirement is 25 feet. The, the the requirement for this zoning is 50 feet. 50 feet. And they've got 25 feet. That's so if we put right. another 25, that would leave 100 feet between the house and the activity. I think the driveway would be proposing with the two that, correct? Isn't that where you're proposing the driveway? So the driveway would be either the buffer. Yeah. More. I haven't seen anything. I guess this is all new to us. So I'm assuming when you're asking to cut the corner, then the road is going to be right there. So that's going to buffer it anyway, isn't it? Well, you know where your corner is, right? Right. Okay, I'm going to go south of that. And then head south up to the highway. On the existing road, the existing part the of the road. The existing road will be used yeah. to go up to the Calder. Yeah. And okay. the Calder it is, it's already yeah. Yeah. in yeah. condition and 15. Then you're going to start going up from that north line to the south. Okay. Yeah. This is what the plan is. Okay. I'm looking for a motion. I would make a motion to approve with the new proposed access as as the access for the site and the 16 conditions as written is there a second i'll second it any further discussion jeff uh, uh, madam chair so the 50-foot buffer is around the pit we're not requiring any buffer from the road to the crawford's property line are we it I'm, I don't think the buffer can be used as roadway. It needs to be a natural buffer. Correct. So the, the, the excess road would be excluded from that 50-foot buffer. I'm looking at the people who know. <laughs> I, it's up to you. We don't have an ordinance requirement for that. Um, so you could set the condition that says that no activities for the pit or the access road shall be within 50 feet of the side yard, the, the property lines of the abutting property owner to the north or something to that extent. Okay. Should we clarify that, that number 15? Yeah. How would that affect the wetland crossing and the de minimis, de minimis and the feasibility of that access road? Yeah. So let me double check that wetland map. I think given the scope, when I look at the wetlands lineation map that's on the last page of the packet, you know, a, a 50 foot is what, I don't think it's gonna be hard to get to that 50 feet from that property line. Get, I mean, it, the scope of where Mr. Thompson's drawn that in is a little hard to make sure we're comparing what's on site with what's on that map. Okay. Madam Chair, the applicant has a. Yes. Mr. Thompson? The road can't, it's going to be next to the right next to the property line, the, right to the pin and the ground is, but it's going to be a long ways from the house. Okay. Does that work? Work, work better? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that, we, we, we weren't against this. Right. The only thing that was well, we're trying to make it work for everybody right. here. Good. Okay. Clarify 15, is 15 okay? I guess the condition 15, does that work? I guess I would. Let me go back to that. I'm sorry. Not the traffic at all. 
I guess I, for my motion, I don't want to amend it. I want to have my motion stand as the conditions utilize the road proposed, the new proposed access, and the 16 conditions as written. For my my um, the motion you want to make, I, I'd like to stay with that. Okay. Is there a second to that I motion? I second it. Yes. Okay, Mike. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next item on the agenda is the subdivision zoning ordinance proposal. I'm going to ask if anybody's here to speak on that. And if they are, we'll hear the public hearing. And if not, and then we'll continue it with uh, if the planning commission wants to do that. Okay. The next item D is the 2023 20, subdivision ordinance zoning ordinance proposal. Is anyone here who wishes to speak on that? Okay, we'll talk to the planning commission then. My thought is maybe we would put that till next month. Or have people read it and are they prepared to I'd, I'd like to put it to next month okay how about the new folks I'm sure I did not get a chance to read okay this thoroughly, so, yeah. so is there a motion to table I motion to table is there a second I'll second <coughs> all in favor aye I okay and Item E, 2023 Zoning Ordinance Amendment Servid Farming Prohibition. Anybody here to speak to that? Okay, Planning Commission. Do you want to address it tonight or should we move it down the road? <coughs> what the? Uh, Didn't it pretty much get shot down? It's not, we're not going to approve any of the curved stuff. It's not right. It's bad. It's, 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 it's prohibiting. Here. It's prohibiting survey farms. Yeah. Animal right. farms yeah. prohibiting. I could vote on it. Mm -hmm. I've I read it. So I, I could okay. vote on it. I could. I would, um, we can take a motion to, this is to prohibit. Okay, Correct. just Correct. so everybody understands. Is there a motion to prohibit animal farm farming in Cook County? I'll make a motion. Let's be specific Is there a about second? the animal. Servid farm. Servid farm. Servid Servid farming. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, and who seconded? Who I'll, seconded? I'll second it, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Is there a moment? Do you want to talk about that wor the legal conference meeting sure. workshop? Yep. It didn't. The link did not link for me. No. Oh, um. So we sent out an email yesterday or Monday, I think, or Friday. Monday. I don't know. Sometime earlier within the last week, that was to a poll for you to give your availability between June and July. Uh, we're going to bring Jay Squires, the land use attorney that we <coughs> consult with, to come up and do a workshop for our planning commission, board of adjustment, hopefully county commissioners that are available, the county attorney, administrator, and staff. Uh, so some of you have been able to get into that poll and click your availability. Thank you very much. For those of you that haven't gotten into that yet, please go in and provide your availability because he's a lawyer. He's busy. So we need to get on a schedule <laughs> as soon as possible. And again, it's between June and July, a very sporadic set of dates. So please do that within okay. the next few days. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. We're adjourned. Planning Commission, her variance, Board of Adjustment. Break? Yes. Okay. Five minutes.
past several years, and now I've compiled them, and I'm making my own dirt. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I might want to I purchase some of your dirt. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, not for a, it's not available. Not for sale. Uh, <laughs> Are we ready, Diana? Okay. We'll call the Board of Adjustment meeting together to order. And we need to review the minutes for the March 8th meeting. Are there changes, corrections, additions? <coughs> Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes for the March meeting? I make the motion to approve. Is there a second? Okay, boys. I'll, I'll, I'll motion. I wasn't there. None of us were there. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, I'll second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Who did we have a meeting? There was just us two. No, th there were three and of us. Mike, Mike, Mike was, was here. Mm -hmm. So he got off the Board of Adjustment and, okay. All right. The Robert and Rochelle Bush variance request for relief. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a variance request for relief from section 4.09C of the zoning ordinance to replace and expand the stairs and deck to the existing structure, a gift shop, at a reduced State Highway 61 setback where a minimum of 130 feet is required, and at a reduced right of way setback where a minimum of 35 feet from right of way is required. Loca located at 4907 East Highway 61. The property is 1.84 acres and located entirely within the single family R1 zone district and within the North Shore Management Zone. The applicants, Robert and Rochelle Bush, are requesting relief from the road setback requirements from Highway 61 to replace the stairs and deck to the existing gift shop. The stairs and deck would encroach 50 feet on the 130 foot road setback requirement. The applicants <coughs> explain in their application that the existing stairs and deck are deteriorating and the replacement will result in greater safety for users. The original deck is shown as 10 by 8 in the assessor's records. The most substantial difference is that the new deck will be widened 10 foot 3 inches by 25 feet 8 inches according to the application to provide more decking space going further from away from the Highway 61. And the stairs will be set further back from Highway 61 and more centered on the decking. The land use guide plan includes some details for the development goals for the East End and Hoveland, which I included in the staff narrative. Um, I did embolden a commercial goal for the county is to provide commercial facilities that meet the needs of residents and visitors, to promote strengthening growth for the traditional commercial service centers of Schroeder, Tofty, Lutz, and Grand Marais, Hoveland, and Grand Portage. For background, the property has a, has a long-standing gift shop business across Highway 61 Chicago Bay in Hopeland. Cook County Assessor's records indicate the structure was built in 1965. Therefore, it is an existing legal nonconformity as it was in place prior to current zoning regulations. Highway 61 has a reduced speed limit in this travel corridor. The addition will meet the road setback requirement from Hammer Road. For septic, the environmental health officer has reviewed the proposal and determined that the property and proposal will be compliant with the septic regulations. There are no issues with impervious surface coverage, wetlands, or slope associated with this request. For public noticing, the application was legally noticed in the Cook County News Herald on March 17, 2023. 42 letters of notification were sent to adjacent property owners as well as county departments and MnDOT. One comment letter, uh, written comment letter in support of the request was received during the written comment period from Dusty Elms, and a technical memo regarding the septic review is enclosed with the packet. There was one late comment that was received after the deadline that's not included with the packets or the record. For staff recommendations for consideration, the expansion of the decking will not be encroaching further into the highway setback from the original decking. The proposal appears to be non-problematic. If approved, the following conditions may be attached to this variance request. One, no component of the proposed construction may be closer <coughs> than 50 feet from the center line of Highway 61, and development of the project shall be consistent with the design plans provided in the variance application. I want to really quickly double check that number one condition should read no closer than 80 feet. My apologies from Highway 61. So. Um, the applicants are here tonight, so they may have some things to add, Madam Chair. Thank you. 
And would the applicants care to speak? Yeah. You can come up to the microphone. Good evening. Uh, Robert Bush, 4919 East Highway 61. Uh, my wife and I, Rochelle, re recently purchased the gift shop there. And what we're looking to do is the decking has been there, I don't know if you've seen the pictures, for years. And it looks pretty. Whoever did the railings, it's, it's really pretty. But from a safety standpoint, it needs to be replaced. And so we're just looking for a variant, seeing as the building has been there for 58 some years. It's really going to be hard to meet that setback. And so that's why we're requesting the variance. More of a safety thing so people can <coughs> enter and exit the building without having to worry about that decking. And we are going to move the stairs down towards the middle so that it will not be encroaching any closer. The deck itself will never encroach any closer than it is now. So okay, thank any you. questions for me? Not yet. Okay. Does anyone wish to speak in support or opposition? No one's standing up, so we'll just leave you sitting right there because I think we might have questions. Okay. Okay, we'll close the public hearing and talk to the planning <coughs> or the Board of Adjustment. Any questions? I think this is a pretty straightforward proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did a site visit. And the new the new deck would be mm -hmm. definite improvement. Yeah, I agree. The deterioration is that bad. Anyone care to make a motion? I'd make a motion to approve with the two conditions, um, except for amending the fifty to eighty in condition one. Is there a second? I second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Quickest variance request ever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if I should still sit here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I ask him what kind of gift shop. <laughs> Just for fun. <laughs> okay, the next. <laughs> Item B <laughs> is the MJ Gunflip Properties LLC variance request. Is there someone here representing the Gunflip? Properties? <laughs> Thank you. In the hot seat. Your name and address? Uh, my name is Mindy Fredrickson. Uh, well, this John is Fredrickson. John Fredrickson. Uh, we own Gunflint Lodge and Outfitters. Um, our address is uh, 143 South Gunflint Lake Road. Thank you. Do you have? Oh, Neva. Thank you, Madam Chair. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving. I just wait till I'm called on. <laughs> okay. So this is a variance request for relief from the Cook County Zoning Ordinance to rebuild a resort lodging structure, which would contain a lobby and commons area and seven lodging units and add four on-site parking spots at a reduced county road setback from CSAH 20. Uh, 40 feet and 3.5 feet respectively, where a minimum of 100 feet is required, located at 143 South Gunflint Lake Road. Um, I'll just say at the beginning of this that I expect that the applicants do have some revisions from my narrative, so I might gloss over some of the things that I think you'll be addressing in a moment here. So, the applicant's property includes 40.86 acres with approximately 1,040 feet of Gunflint Lake shoreline. The property is entire, entirely contained within the resort commercial residential zone district and Gunflint Lake is classified as a recreational development lake. For general project description, the applicants, John and Mindy Fredrickson of Gunflint Lodge and Outfitters, are requesting relief from the county road <coughs> setback requirements to replace and expand upon a structure that burned down in a fire in 2022 and add four parking spaces within the road setback area. The original structure, Justine's Cabin, was situated in the middle of a triangle of travel <coughs> surfaces, which included County Road 20 or South Gunflint Lake Road on the south side of the structure and two driveway accesses for the resort on the northeast and northwest sides of the structure. Uh, survey information from North Shore Surveying shows the original structure was approximately 36.5 feet from the center line of CSH 20, South Gunflint Lake Road. The new structure will be placed in approximately the same location as the original structure. Assessor's records show Justine's cabin was 2,180 square feet of floor area 
and the new structure shows a ground floor area of 2,297 interior square feet with a 456 square foot exterior canopy. The proposed new structure will be expanded with a second story and a walkout lower level with a maximum building height of 32 feet. The proposed use of the structure will be intensified, housing seven rental units and a lobby and commons area. The use of Justine's cabin has changed over the years, most recently being used for massage services, cold storage, and staff use. The setback distance of the new structure is approximately 40 feet from the county road center line. Uh, the, the, vari the original variance proposal also included four parking spaces between the structure and South Gunflint Lake Road, which has historically and is a vegetative buffer and shed location. Um, for ordinance citation, this variance request includes relief from two sections of the zoning ordinance. The structure and parking areas require setback relief from the road center line setback of 100 feet per the requirements for resorts and I included that ordinance citation in the packet for you that's located in two locations of the zoning ordinance. Um, just a quick footnote, Minnesota State Statute does have provisions for rebuilding existing legal non-conforming structures for existing shoreland resorts. However, due to the change in configurations and the time that has passed, those provisions no longer apply to this case. The Cook County Land Use Guide Plan uh, approval of the variant should demonstrate consistency with the goals and policies of the Cook County Land Use Guide Plan. I did include excerpts uh, related to development goals for the Gunflint Trail and resorts included in the packet. Um, I did embolden uh, general land use goals to have an inventory of land suitable and appropriately located for the anticipated types of uses compatible with natural resources and proximity to existing infrastructure and protect non-compatible uses from one another. Um, and a lot of the goals of the Gunflint do indicate uh, historic resorts and being able to support those uses. Um, yeah, and commercial goal to provide commercial facilities to meet the needs of residents and visitors. Policy number 42, specialized commercial activity for resorts. In this case, that depends on and requires specific site conditions that can coexist with residential and other land uses through the application of standards regarding screening from adjacent uses, traffic conditions, size and scope of the activity, and other similar concerns. For background, just a little bit more on that. Gunflint Lodge was established in 1925. The current owners purchased the resort in 2016. Justine's cabin burnt down in 2022 was one of the original structures built at the resort in 1937 per the application. Um, assessor's records show the effective year built age of the cabin was 1965 and the structure had 2,180 square feet of ground floor area. Um, the effective year is an appraiser's estimate of improvements and remaining life in the structure. Um, I did include pictures from the assessor's records for the um, original structure. For site conditions and considerations, the original structure was served by a septic system, I believe a holding tank, um, which was damaged during the post-fire demolition process. The applicants are working with Cook County Environmental Health and a licensed septic designer to assess the septic capacity needed to allow the new building to be served by the existing septic system on site. General resort development requirements states that all new units must utilize water conserving plumbing features and have water meters installed and accessible which serve all sewage generating appliances. This will be evaluated during the permitting process if approved. Impervious surface coverage is measured for the entire parcel. So the triangle area in this case is a part of the larger 40 acre parcel. So therefore this increase in impervious surface doesn't exceed the, those requirements. Wetlands are not a consideration for the need of the variance. For slope, the parcel has an approximate 13% downslope towards Gunflint Lake. There are no steep slopes or bluffs driving the need for the variance. With regard to the road, uh, South Gunflint Lake Road, CSAH 20 is a gravel dead end road that serves other resorts, seasonal and year round residential properties on Gunflint Lake and Loon Lake. Gunflint Lodge and Outfitters is located at the beginning section of the road, thereby making all road users pass through this travel corridor to get to their destination. The photo on page 10 of the staff narrative shows the Gunflint Trail in black in the lower left corner uh, with South Gunflint Lake Road following the south shoreline of Gunflint Lake. A white star is added to that photo to notate the approximate location of the variance request. 
Note the project location relative to the entire road length. Some of the written comments identify the high use of this road and cite potential issues with development so close to the road. Additionally, there is regular pedestrian activity along this section of road from users of the resort. The Cook County Highway Engineer, Robbie Haas, has provided the following technical information for the Board of Adjustments con consideration. Um, maybe I won't read through the County Highway Engineer's wording so very specifically, because I've stated a lot and I hope you've all read this already, but essentially uh, what he's saying here is that traffic has been increasing historically on this road at a pretty steady rate. And I think one of the more important points is um, that this is the highest road travel for a gravel road in Cook County, at least as far as the county roads go. Um, so our county engineer has a little chart on page 11 of the staff narrative. And so average annual daily traffic is that AADT. So it's an estimate of how many cars are going through. And so you'll see that for travel surfaces, South Gunfant Lake Road is, is pretty high um, as far as that goes. Um, yeah, his words, you can see that South Gunfant Lake Road is one of our busier, if not the busiest, but he won't confirm without digging more gravel roads in the county. So the travel corridor with the variance request is proposed is characterized by several driveway entrances from the resort with a hill and turn in the road that does impact the line of sight to travelers. The photo at the top of page 12 of the staff narrative uh, shows the proposed build site looking westerly um, on the right hand side and the resort's road on the left side going towards Gunflint Lake. There is a parking area and driveway entrance across the road. The hill and slope change and turn in the road, albeit not severe, does result in limited line of sight along this travel corridor. Uh, the county road distinguishment. I'm not going to read through this whole section uh, because a little bit of an update on that. Yesterday, the county board of commissioners did review the road distinguishment request and they did approve that. So um, essentially, the two upwards northerly parts of the triangle now no longer are county roads on paper and rightfully are um, going to be just as they have been historically as far as Gunpoint Lodge and Outfitters. So it is to say that you could envision this parcel as having South Gunpoint Lake Road and then land on north and south side. So the timing of this request, I'm sorry that that's not more clearly indicated on here, but we're trying to work with timing on people on this. So is there any questions about the Board of Commissioners side of things? I might defer to Commissioner Sullivan since she was at the meeting. Do you want to add anything on that point at this time? Um, just to let you know, it was a unanimous vote of the County Board of Commissioners to extinguish the interest in the abandoned highway. Um, it has not been, we've done no work, no maintenance, no plowing, nothing there. And um, probably shouldn't have been on the plat maps, but it was there. So anyway, we have uh, made our intent to extinguish it. Also, we've notified the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, which is a requirement because of the proximity of Gunflint Lake. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And just to finish up on my part of things, so for public noticing, this was noticed in the News Herald on March 17th. We sent out 23 letters of notification to adjacent property owners, as well as county departments and the DNR hydrologist. I did provide a pretty lengthy description trying to summarize the nature and intent behind the written comments that we received. Um, it was pretty split. We had a, a good number of people comment both kind of for and against or just concerned for the request. Specifically, a lot of things is just related to the road travel and that's why my staff report does kind of try to go into the details, maybe showing data behind what some of those feelings are about the heavy traffic use on this road and concerns about sight lines and safety. So, um, and then for staff recommendations for consideration, um, when rebuilding a grandfathered non-conforming structure, it's not unusual for property owners to take the opportunity to make improvements upon the original structure. The original Justine's cabin structure has been modified and added on to over the years and has served a variety of uses. The current owners are using this rebuild opportunity to add value and guest capacity to the resort. Key considerations are new driveway entrances, proximity of structure and parking area to the road, character of the road, see conditions and consideration section, increase in use and height of the new structure from what was there historically, and will the essential character of the locality be altered? Driveway entrances. 
Um, I think the applicants do plan on addressing this, so I'm not going to go into heavy detail on that. Uh, road proximity to proposed structure. It is favorable that the replacement structure be placed as far from the county road as possible, as it appears the applicants have proposed. However, the removal of the existing vegetated buffer without the replacement, with the replacement of the propo originally proposed parking area and loading and unloading zone may not be suitable given the nature and close of, close of the use of the close proximity road. The existing vegetated buffer serves as a visual screening to the resort development for the traveling public and maintains the aesthetic and character of the area. I did have a note about road proximity to the proposed parking area, but I'll leave it to the applicants to provide their updates on that. Um, changes in structure from historic use. The proposed structure deviates from the historic structure in two ways, the height increase and the use increase. Historic Justine's cabin was a lower profile. The new structure will be two stories that may be as tall as 32 feet. Additionally, seven rental units will increase the use of the structure, which the Board of Adjustment should take into consideration. The essential character criteria. Uh, some of the public comments indicate that approval of this variance may alter the character of the area due to the changes proposed that are different from the original structure. The Board of Adjustment should take this into consideration and make a finding since that is a factor for evaluating a variance request. Is the intensification of the use appropriate for this location? The BOA may find that this location may not be suitable to the expansion plans due to the height increase and close proximity to the road. For making a decision and conditions, please refer to page 18 to review the criteria for evaluating a variance request. The Board of Adjustment may fully approve, partially approve, or deny the variance request based on their findings against the standards or test questions listed on pages 1 and 2. Partial approval may include conditions or modifications from the original proposal. Any conditions set must be directly related to and bear a rough proportionality to the impact created by the variance. The BOA may find that the variance do request does not meet, demonstrate the practical difficulty is present to necessitate a variance relief. <coughs> it is the burden of the applicant to offer alternatives that may satisfy those concerns. If fully or partially approved, I did include some conditions in the staff narrative to um, potentially mitigate some of those impacts, such as conformity to the septic requirements, uh, no vegetation removed between the lodging structure and the county road, and a vegetated buffer to be maintained to provide visual screening from the new lodging structure, no new driveway entrances permitted, uh, no component of the roof may exceed 32 feet or any other distance or height as determined by the BOA. No component of the proposed construction may be closer to 40 feet from the center line of the road, and the building shall closely match the style and materials of other Gunpoint Lodge outfitter buildings. Um, and just ask a question, is there a more specific way to quantify this condition? I think that's all I have to say, Madam Chair. Just Thank a you. Short little spiel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you have things you wish to add? Sure. Uh, <coughs> yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, um, Gunsett Lodge is going to turn 100 years old in 2025, uh, as Neva said. So, um, and and this is one of the older buildings, uh, certainly a historic building on the Gunsett Lodge property. Um, so, so you know, of course, John and I are very um, aware of and cognizant of the historic nature of the of the resort and our interest in keeping that history and tradition uh, of a family, you know, this is, we're the third family that's, that's had ownership of the lodge, but it's been a family owned resort really for a hundred years. And so we're very, um, of course, cognizant of that and, and see that as part of our responsibility of keeping up this, this tradition uh, on Gunflint Lake. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, um, Justine's cabin, which was a historic building, burned down last May and we do have insurance and mortgage obligations that require us to rebuild. Um, <coughs> we have, you know, we've considered this carefully, and this is really the most beneficial location on our property to build. The lot's already cleared. It's close to the road. It's close to the center of the, of the resort where the density of the resort can be um, kind of compacted, close to, you know, the lodge and activities and things that are already going on. And, you know, while some of the commenters have talked about, you know, density of population or, or activity around the resort, um, you know, when you look at the zoning ordinance, 
uh, we still have half the density allowed by the county ordinance for our zoning. So the, lo the addition of this building with seven lodge rooms is really nowhere near making this um, a densely populated area or a densely populated use. Um, we also received or, or um, should receive a Main Street Revitalization Grant um, from DEED uh, that was granted for the purpose of rebuilding a burned down building on a vacant lot. So that's another reason that we really need to be able to rebuild in this particular location. That grant was approved by the Northland Foundation with input from Cook County communities. So that's, that's important to us for us to be able to use this spot to rebuild. Um, I know that a lot of comments were received um, you know, about this project. And while some of the comment, and, and I assume you guys have had the chance to read all of those comments, but <coughs> while some of the commentators would like to have the building replaced exactly as it was, that's simply not possible. The, the building, you know, frankly was not used much at the time that it burned down because it was so old and it had been added on to several times. Um, it wasn't efficient and it just didn't really meet any kind of modern purpose, um, residential or commercial. With the cost of land and building in this area, we can't afford to rebuild a building that doesn't have a commercial use. Resort commercial is what we're zoned for, and that's the most efficient use of this land. And what the land has been used for, for its 100-year history. Um, again, the building we're proposing is not a hotel, which is what some of the commentators have talked about. It's a building with seven lodge rooms. Similar types of buildings like this are available all up and down the Gunflint Trail. For example, Borderland Lodge, right across the lake from us. Big Bear Lodge, Clearwater Lodge, Bearskin Lodge, all have two-story um, lodge buildings with, uh, with lodge rooms in them. Um, the building right next, uh, as far as the two stories go, um, all of the buildings in this area are two-story buildings. The, the adjacent building to this, um, to the, I guess that would be the east, yep. is a two-story building um, used for staff housing. The lodge itself, which is directly north, is a two-story building. The um, maintenance shop, which is right across the county road to the south, is a two-story building. Um, and, you know, again, the, the resort next door to us has a two-story um, lodge building even closer to the county road than what we're proposing. And Borderland Road, a lodge right across the lake is a two-story building with lodge rooms. So this is not a new use that's never been heard of on the Gunflint Trail. It's, it's well established as a historical use on the Gunflint Trail. Um, looking at the type of building that, you know, with, with these lodge rooms, um, it's a more cost-effective way for us to build than putting in another, uh, another like, single-use ca uh, cabin, which is important when you consider how much the cost of, of building has increased over the last several years. Um, it's also a kind of lodging that, that Gunflint Lodge doesn't currently have. Right now, all we have is uh, single-use cabins, and we do actually get a lot of requests for people who want to come and have more of a lodge room style stay um, where they want just, you know, something for a couple to stay in or, you know, a couple of brothers who are going to go out on a fishing trip or whatever. So that is a request that we get quite a bit um, that we haven't been able to fulfill. So it does meet, meet a need that we have. Um, uh, I guess as, as we talk about the, um, the traffic density, um, the, the survey that, um, that the highway department provided that Neva refers to um, said that there was, what was it, 445 or something was the AADT. Um, the, but but the, the state average for a state aid highway, the average AADT is 2,200 cars per day. So we're at less than 20% of what an average state aid highway AADT is. So the reality is that 
we're not really that heavily a trafficked area. You know, we are still a one-way, or a dead end rather, gravel road um, in the most sparsely populated um, county in the state. <laughs> it's just, you know, I, I run on that road every day and I don't pass a car. Uh, we had people that came up and, and did site visits and we stood in the road and talked and no cars passed us by. So the reality is that I think that um, while, I, while I recognize that many of our neighbors want things to stay the way they always have been, we're not really looking at significantly um, creating a, a, a big traffic hazard or safety hazard. Um, also, the building design, again, it's, it's adding seven new lodging rooms, um, which would be by definition seven new cars. Um, at most. At, at most which actually adds up to one additional car to the AADT. So if you look at the fact that it's seven rooms, we have um, an average of about 50% occupancy year round, actually a little bit lower, but just for ease of math, if you say 50% occupancy year round, and the average stay is about 3.5 days, um, that is an addition of 365 cars over the year. So an addition of one car per day to your AADT. So that's not even statistically significant. Um, what else? <laughs> um, so, so as Neva alluded to, you know, we did, we did read through all of the comments ourselves. We certainly have talked to the highway department and to land services and other departments in the county. And we do take the safety of our, of our guests and our neighbors seriously. So kind of what we are suggesting as far as changes is, um, you know, one of the things that the highway department was concerned about was adding new driveways that were close together. Um, so we're proposing now that we would eliminate adding those two new driveways. We would instead have a, sort of a pull through that would be a loading zone, loading and unloading zone that would connect the two existing driveways. So somebody can pull in off of the existing driveway, pull through, unload their, their stuff, get checked in, get into their room, and then they can pull back through and then we're suggesting that when they pull back through, they would be forced to do a left turn and come back around to enter the county road from the west driveway. So the east driveway, we're going to make one way only as an exit only from the county road. So essentially we're taking one, one entrance off of the county road now, rather than adding two new driveways. Um, we also would suggest that um, we remove the, the four parking spots that were proposed and um, we've got lots of parking that, that is available on other resort properties. So we can remove that property or those parking spots. We would like to keep one parking spot, um, which would be ADA um, parking because we do want to have a handicapped accessible unit in this in this building again handicapped accessibility is something that's really difficult to find on the gunflint trail and this is something that we can can offer when we do a new building um, so i think th those are the suggestions that we have we think the request is reasonable we think it meets the needs of gunflint lodge to continue to grow and remain viable as an operating business um, it's a conforming use it's consistent with the historic use and look and feel of the resort um, so that's what we'd like to ask you to consider. Uh, we're obviously happy to feedback? answer any questions. Um, we do have our architect come up all the way from Brainerd to, to, to join us today. Um, and if there's questions on, uh, on design things that we need to work through, he's obviously happy to um, help us out with that. I can move over if you guys need the microphone. Okay. I, I'm assuming there are people who wish to comment, and so we might have to move you out for a oh. bit and move you back. 
We can talk loud if you would. Well, or sit on this side and talk loud. Okay, is there someone who wishes to speak on this request? In favor? You can. Back in the hot seat. <laughs> uh, Chris Short, 7969 Northwoods Loop. Um, just want to talk a little bit about some of the build stuff and then also just to their character. Um, I mean, what I'm hearing and seeing, it sounds like it fits the existing, you know, what was there and what they're trying to do with it. And there's been a lot of talk about the two-story, um, being a lodge owner with a two-story. Um, I see the benefit of it and the benefit to what they're doing. They're trying to work with their existing cleared site that's already there. Um, and they're going up, which, you know, um, can be allowed and is allowed in the county with, with height requirements. And they're staying under that. Um, and I think the idea going up is great. Um, with the size of their property, they could they could go anywhere and and clear clear trees and clear space and um, you know pack gravel. And I think staying with where they're at and going up is a, is a smart use of it. I think it I think it really does fit. Um, and I also always you know we're new to the community, but we've, I've been reading and learning so much. And you know I keep looking at the the twenty thirty five vision. Um, and from a commercial standpoint, it, you know it always talks about enhancing and improving resorts um, and this sure seems to fit right into it um, it really does you know talk to exactly what the goal is and the vision is um, and one day we'll probably be in their shoes asking for something else to enhance and improve and, and that's the vision that's the idea so I think it's there and then um, they're just been awesome people we're new um, they're a huge part of the community uh, the Gunflin Trail uh, the Gunflin Trail Association um, they're some of the biggest influencers. They, they, you know, just contribute a ton, and all their decisions are, you know, for the community. The stuff they host, the different events, um, you know, they host meetings and the canoe races, and they just do all this stuff for the community. So they're, they're in it, and they're they're smart, and they're they are in it for the long haul, and they're making decisions that are only going to, you know, make that kind of stuff better. So, thank uh, you. I'm in favor. <laughs> thank you. Someone else wish to speak? Opposed or in favor? And we do have the comments. If, if no one else is wanting to speak, I will close it to the public and put it to the Planning Commission. Madam Chair, I do have some questions for clarification. Okay. Um, Two-story, is that two stories above grade or is one partially below grade? Two stories above grade. Okay, is there a basement also, or it's just on? Uh, we've talked about maybe tucking some mechanical space under. I heard a walkout referenced in the narrative, and, and um, <coughs> that's not currently part of our plans. We're happy to have it written in as, as part of the description, but okay. two levels above grade. Okay, um, and then I have another question. Cool. Um, so just for clarification, the pull-through that you're, that you're um, talking about, is that on the, the road side or the lodge side? Yeah. On, on, on the road side. On the road side. So you, you pull off where, the, where our main lodge side is. Right. You take a left onto the, the first driveway mm -hmm. first of the lines, and then you take a quick right to go up to the front of the, the, the proposed building to do the unloading. And that's where we think that probably, we probably need one um, ADA spot or handicap spot mm -hmm. uh, for the ADA unit. We'll be able to unload there and then continue on. And then there's the second driveway that's a little bit steeper. Um, and with the difficulty of you know, the, the, the sight lines that people had talked about in the, in the, uh, in the feedback, talking to Robbie, talking to Neva, uh, what we're thinking is it would be best if we just make that a forced left and make that second driveway just a one way. That takes all the traffic coming out of that side, out of the picture, mm -hmm. and actually improves the safety from what it has been historically. Because <coughs> cars coming out of both of those now, if we, if we make that a one way, there will only be cars coming out of the first one. Uh, which is the one coming uh, the closest to the uh, to the Gunflip Trail. Which is the one that has better visibility. Has better, vi better visibility and less steep, um, and just it, it kind of cleans things up a little bit. We force everybody who comes through that drop off, take a left, go down around the, the, the Y, and come out that main entrance, that first entrance of the lodge. Great, thank you. And I did do a site visit. Go around and then we'll go down and park in the parking lot close to the lodge. 
Yeah. Okay, I, and I did do a site visit, and I do think what, what they're suggesting, um, uh, making that, um, is it the east driveway a one-way? Yep. Uh, that's where the line of sight is, is poor, so I think that's, that's going to increase the, um, the safety there, mm -hmm. okay. I believe. I, too, did a site visit and had the same discussion and came to the same conclusion. No. Okay. Um, the questions, anybody else have questions? I comments? did um, since the architect's up. It's the, the this comment about a 32 foot height limit. What is the county height limit? Is it 30, 35 feet? 35 feet. Because I know I just built recently and got some surprises in terms of how tall. I still stayed in. I was I was in there, but uh, when I started out thinking it was going to be 27 feet, turned into 34. That so was one of the things I was going to ask for some relief on in the uh, conditions, and I know these are just suggested, but to allow us the full 35. Um, the other challenging piece is the ordinance, it, it, you know, in the ordinance it's defined as 35 above the average ground height, and mathematically that's difficult because the average of the four corners, the average, or halfway on the, each of the sides, so I, I think it's a, it's a, um, uh, there's a math question about how that's measured, not to overthink it, but we'd like to have the benefit of the full 35 feet so that we don't get into a situation where average grade is, is um, um, you know, putting us any closer to uh, the limit. And I'd certainly recommend to the board that we do that because this, we know that if you look at the ground, it's sloping down away and so in order to put the driveway in here with the unload position and then have the ground sloping from that side of the building away from it and then to put the 32 foot restriction just just and again just personal experience right I've just went through this myself um, okay. that uh, uh, there are that we could create okay. Do problems that don't need to exist comments Paul I don't think so. No, I did a site visit, and yeah, the only things I noticed were just around the parking lot and the driveway entrances, and it's been addressed. So, Charlie, yeah, I think everything has been addressed. I'm I'm just trying to think of how to adjust the conditions. Um, and I guess one question, you know, when I'm looking at this uh, proposed uh, layout on page 28 of our packet. And you've got the bermed landscape buffer with plantings, and where you would eliminate those two driveways to the gunflint, would you extend that berm, uh, continuing around, and, and or to, to really define the drive, mm -hmm. or uh, what, what's your thoughts there? The, the two existing roadways would stay intact. They're going to continue. To yeah, be I'm looking at this on you, on this drawing that we've got. You've proposed two new driveways that you've are eliminating and using the existing drives. We wouldn't be creating We just any close new that off with so that berm would, same berm. Yep, yeah, it okay. would run uh, essentially corner to corner. Yeah. Okay. And yep. now we're removing a, a building that's right up against the, you know, the county road right now. Yep. Doing away with that one. Okay. The, and I will leave the conditions to you, but that second condition, no vegetation removed with the, with the pull through on the roadside. Um, um, you know, we're all in favor of restoring a vegetative buffer, but to, to not remove any is, is not possible as it's laid out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to bring that one up. The, the, the restriction on that just didn't make sense when you're putting that size of a building in. Yeah. Yeah. I would ask that we can talk about a requirement that, you, you know, floor plans? some sort of landscaping design. Mm -hmm. However, you'd like to define that. Just yeah, yeah, that we're 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 that we're keeping the rest of the resort. That's just not right over. Um, just because. Yeah, yeah I think to that. See how when you do the build, you're going to be able to, to right. keep some of those trees full, right? Exactly. It just. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen a footprint uh, with square footage, or I don't, I don't <coughs> seen square footage numbers, but I haven't seen a floor plan or a concept. I think it's in the packet because yeah. I flipped through the packet. It's on the last it page there. of the packet, mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Um, if you have an electronic version, it's going to show up right, but they didn't print off correctly. Uh, so this is supposed <coughs> to be the floor page plan. One, one oh. so what page is that? It's the very last page of the packet. So if you have an electronic version, it's going to show up, but 
the hard copy is page 30 on right? the electronic version page uh, no on the hard copy version oh, what page here in this page it should still be page 30 though page mm. 30 so it's keep going towards the back Linda well I'm going well see the, uh, so page it's 57 50 I'm on page okay, 56 well, right now that. 58 of 108 that oh yeah that's what we see yes <laughs> just in uh -huh. correctly I'm sorry the electronic version does yeah if you look at my laptop maybe you can share it okay yep, that's yep. Thank you. there we go very much so yeah I can, so can you see the, I've got the, a digital you so you can it. give that to Judy if you okay. know with the interior floor, floor plan I mean there is some in flux within the, the footprint and, and there's a possibility we might go down in size um, just uh, to try and stay within budget um, so I mean the, the what we applied for in the variance is kind of the maximum that we would need and understanding that you, uh, getting the approval for that would then allow us to go down in size if we need to as we're covered as any things and changing things. Really, we probably can't afford something <laughs> that we, but we didn't want to tie the architect's hands, so we wanted to, you know, come to you the sort of the biggest that we thought we would need to do, and then ideally yeah. we'll be backing off from that. Right. And then exterior and roofing and colors and. So the exterior roofing, so in, uh, if you've been up to the resort, we've got kind of a standard Dunslet Lodge look. We, at the, at the, the Sherwin Williams store, we've got <laughs> Dunslet Green on file. So it's, it's this, it's a. Right. It, it's a kind of a, a, a mid green. Um, all the buildings are finished. A lot of them are T one eleven. A lot of them are um, are are, uh, uh, are are just uh, uh, what am I thinking? Um, but what's that? La yeah, lap lap siding. They're painted the same green, uh, same shingles, similar similar shingles. We've got kind of a a general look that we follow within the resort. All of our cabins are painted the same color. Um, that's what uh, the, the previous owners have done for years. That's what we do. Uh, interestingly enough, like the green color is what uh, what Disneyland uses as a background color for buildings they don't want people to notice. Um, <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, uh, Disney calls it a disappearing green, uh, which it, it kind of works that way. It's, it, so it's, it's less of a, a draw to the eye um, when you're kind of looking at the rest of the uh, the landscape. So it, it works really well for a resort situation. Okay. Is the shed painted the same color? Yes. Okay, we've got a color picture of the shed in uh, the package. Yep, yep, yep. But, yep. but I, I, I guess the, the long and short of it is, you know, we don't have an intent to create a whole new look. Of, right, we've, we've, got, we've got 50 buildings on this property. They're all sort of consistent. We want to fall in line with that. You know, right. Things will, but, you know, you know, we'll be more updated than some older buildings. But, but the intent is to... You know, create a nice looking building, but one that's consistent with the historical This will be plumbers square compared to all the other buildings on the property. Yeah. Well, certainly the other ones there. Well, I'm wondering about the footprint of the, because you're legally allowed to build in the same footprint on a bur building that burns down within a certain time frame. And yeah, the yeah, time yeah. frame has elapsed, yeah. so that's a variance request. And then the footprint. Now we're asked to change that. How? What is the difference between the old footprint and the new footprint? So we, we um, to to best use uh, the site and to make it kind of work as well as possible um, and take advantage of the view. We, we rotate it just slightly. It actually does bring it a little bit more of the building outside of the, uh, the variance zone. So it kind of brings it a little bit further away from the original building. And then it allows that middle public room that we have for you know, um, in the building. We can have windows that overlook down to the lodge, down to the lake, and then um, that way we kind of have the benefit of the lake view in the building without having to put it down on the lake shore or by the lake, you know, on one of the lots that we have along the lake shore. It kind of lets us take advantage of the view without um, yeah. clearing any more area for using for the only building. Yeah. The but the question is, what was the footprint before, and what is the new footprint? I think Neva's got yeah, that. Yeah, through that is a big difference. So, 
Page so 56 of 108, so Madam yeah. Chair, has a visual representation okay. of the different footprints. The red hash marked hollow area is the original Justine's cabin. Uh, Luckily, one. there's a survey on record for that. Six. The one that you were looking at this is the right only here, right here. See, this is where the original is, and that's where it's just kind of shifted like that. Which actually, to me, appears to be um, okay. So the the red lines are the original footprint, mm -hmm. and the maroon line maroon is the new footprint. That's a proposed building. Yeah. Okay. Good. I see the adjustment. And then it's doubling the square footage with the two stories. Right. Okay, got it. And it's not double because the, the, the public area is, is, is Story. two stories high, so you get, you get some presence in it. Right. Um, but, uh, okay. Any que other questions from the board? Um, I'm looking at the condition number two, I believe it is, talking about the uh, vegetative buffer and give me this back. Thank what you. I'm wondering is if we and this is probably for for the architect but if we change that to a 10-foot vegetative buffer with plantings will be established along that right away where you already you've got it in the drawing as berm landscape buffer with planting if we if we just put a number on it and said you're going to establish a 10-foot buffer along that and then we can eliminate any any other distances in that condition does that work That's about right. yep. okay and it, this was served with a holding tank before it was a holding tank for the uh or it, it, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly i think it did feed into a septic um, but there was a, a septic with the with the old building that damaged when we when they came in to demolish the burned down building. Right. Um, so we'll work with we're working with uh, Jed Smith to um, to design you know, and, and obviously the county. And since it's you know, when we we've talked to Jed, it was four feet of snow on everything. He wasn't able to do anything. And right. Had him come out and do a full design. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go through the li the variance supporting denying finding a fact. Number one is the variance consistent with the goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the Cook County zoning. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Okay. Number two, is the proposed use of the property allowed in the land use district in which the property is located? Yes. 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 Resort commercial. Is the property owner proposing to use the property in a reasonable manner, not permitted by the Cook County Zoning Ordinance? I think it's reasonable, yes. I think it's reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Any disagreement? Has the property owner established that the practical difficulty involved is due to circumstances unique to the property and not created by the property owner? Yes. 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 Will approving the variance maintain the essential character of the locality? Yes. Yes. Yep. Has the property owner established that the practical difficulty involved involves more than economic considerations alone. Can you read that yeah. one, please? Yeah, read that again, please. Has the property owner established that the practical difficulty involved involves more than economic considerations alone? I would say yes, yes I mean. Yes. Okay, yeah. I think the fire. The roads and the, yeah was not their doing, I hope. <laughs> so We'll leave that to law enforcement. <laughs> okay. Well, it passes the questions. Is there a motion to, on this 
variance request? I would motion to approve with, go back to the condition, sorry, just give me a second. Page 17. 17. Um, the conditions as written, except for I would like to amend condition two. And four, um, please. And four, so just yeah. let me get there, I don't know, I'll be so slow. Yeah, I'm talking. Here yes, two and four. Um, I'd like to amend condition two to read a 10 foot vegetative buffer with plantings must be established between uh, County State Aid 20 and any component of the construction. Does that. Um, We've got the drive through unloading. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the any component. So between the, so the 10 foot from the county state aid ditch and and then the new drive through driveway is 10 foot we we'll reestablish a new you're, 10 foot you're going to reestablish buffer veg put yeah. some plantings in there yeah um, so i'd like that number two changed and number four changed to 35 feet i think if i could 35 yeah. feet is is uh is, is it's not a variance that's not a variance. it's so not a restriction we, it's all we could just strike number it's four strike, together. strike it all together okay uh, it, it, <coughs> if I may, Madam Chair, it, it, it is variance because of the location of the everything. It's, it's, it would not be a variance requirement if it if it met all the setback requirements. But because it doesn't meet the setback requirements, all three dimensional. Uh, okay. Do you so want to amend it to thirty five feet? Oh, amend it to thirty five feet. <coughs> Do you want to address whether there is a walkout space oh. allowed? I don't want to address that in my. Okay. We do. I don't. We don't have a plan right now. Just we, we have. Um, where to go? right now we're thinking possibly um, mechanical to, to go all the way. Okay, because we the any plans to have any, any Yeah, mechanicals. Yeah, different. Okay, the variance the request will be based on the plans presented tonight. Right. Yes. Yep. Should we? You can add that, Madam Chair, as a as another condition. Well, I would be willing to add that as requested. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other question I have is: Is there does the county have right of way on that road? So it's a prescriptive easement, I think, is what the term it's Rob an easement. uses. So it's the maintained area, the so surface of the, the road only. County ditch. Okay. All right. So, so I, I would just request that um, we don't lock us into this size as we as i said before we might be going down in size then if we do re redesign to a smaller size we can just say no larger than no larger than no larger than presented no larger than presented that'd be great yeah. okay i would agree with that as an addition okay everybody got the conditions and no got it straight can i ask for one more point of clarification and that's on condition five no component of proposed construction i feel like maybe yes. that's clear if you just say building or building and covered canopy. Um, component of proposed construction could be interpreted more broadly than that. Mm -hmm. Just change construction to structure, I guess. Structure. That would cover the yes. that base. Okay. You okay with that? I'm good with that. So your motion with those clarifications, is there a second to that motion? Have we I had second. that? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And number three, or C, we'll do that one. What page does that one start on? It is 87. Okay, Neva, do you want to present this? Yep, thank you, Madam Chair. This is a variance request for relief from the Cook County Zoning Ordinance, Section 4.09C, to place a principal structure at a reduced County Road 34 setback where a minimum of 50 feet is required. 
The property's up. The applicant's property includes 1.09 acres and approximately 316 feet of Lake Superior shoreline. The parcel is contained entirely within the single family R1 zone district. The newly created lots within this zone district must be one acre in size and 200 feet wide. Lake Superior is classified as a general development lake and is within the North Shore management zone. The applicants, Karen and Anatoly Rosenplans, are requesting relief from county road setback requirements to place a 1,080 square foot two bedroom cabin on the property. The cabin is proposed to be placed 41 feet from center line of County Road 34. The County Road setback is 50 feet from center line. I did include some statements from the Cook County Land Use Guide Plan regarding the Highway 61 corridor and Lake Superior shoreline um, and guiding principles for residential goals to provide a range of residential options with respect to cost, density of development, and locations within the county, and pretty much sites in the land use guide plan that you need to have a septic system. For background, the 1.09 acre property is undeveloped. There is a drainage ditch that was installed by the county, Cook County Highway Department that bisects the property. The adjacent properties are residential cabins and homes. The Lake Superior shoreline lot is wide but shallow in depth. Additional complications to building in conformity with the regulations are existing wetlands and bluff features on the property as explained below. In 2022, the applicants began the variance review process for this project under a different configuration. Following staff recommendations, the applicants reformulated their plan to bring forward the current request. The development plans also show a sauna, which meets all of the setback requirements and does not require variance relief. For site conditions and, cons site conditions and considerations, the development plans have a septic system designed. The location for the septic tank and mound will be on the west, southwest side of the property. A memo from Mitch Everson is enclosed, which indicates that the mound design includes a 10 by 50 box mound, which will meet all applicable setbacks. There are no issues with impervious surface coverage. The proposal does include wetland impacts, which have been formally reviewed and approved by the Cook County Wetland Technical Evaluation Panel. Please refer to the memo from Mitch Travis for further information. The shoreline property has a bluff feature. The applicants have designed the lot development to meet all bluff and shoreline setback requirements. The application was legally noticed in the Cook County News Herald on March 17, 2023. 15 letters of notification were sent to adjacent property owners as well as county departments and, and Minnesota DNR hydrologists. One written comment was received during the written comment period from Mary and James Schwabel in support of the request. They didn't see any negative or visual impact from the resulting request. Two staff memos are enclosed from Mitch Travis regarding wetland impacts and Mitchell Everson regarding septic design. Staff recommendations for consideration. The subject parcel is narrow, resulting in very limited conforming build area. Wetlands, the constructed drainage way, the bluff, and the lot shape all present physical limitations to conforming development not created by the property owner. The applicants have been receptive to technical feedback and have taken the time to go through the wetland replacement plan process. The proposal meets septic and wetland regulations and have either already or will secure the necessary permits and or approvals. If approved, the following conditions may be attached to this variance request. Number one, the property shall conform with Minnesota Rule 7080 and Cook County septic requirements. Number two, the structure shall be permitted only where and as depicted in the variance application, no closer than 41 feet from road center line. And number three, any other conditions the applicant suggests during the hearing to address concerns the BOA may deem necessary. I will add that I've been working with the applicants and their agent, uh, Anton Moody, quite a while over the last year to come up with this configuration. And I feel very comfortable that given all the unique practical difficulties on this property, that this is a really um, well thought out plan that's trying to meet all of the different wetland and septic regulations of the county. Thank you. Does someone wish to speak regarding this variance? I'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys okay. might have for sure, just about our process. But I don't, you know, I mean, I, I think anybody okay. did a good job explaining, but I certainly can. If there's questions, we'll call yeah, on you. Certainly. Thank you. We'll close it to the public and the commissioner or board of adjustment. I did a site visit to this property. I think their observance of the bluff setbacks has been critical so the the fact that they're looking to move in a little closer to the highway and have that that variance request there 
is the appropriate approach to this. It makes a lot of sense. Because yeah. uh, uh, you get close to the lake. Um, I don't know if it was on your property line, but there was some soil that did slough off into the lake that I saw. So staying back and away from it, protecting the vegetation, yeah. amen. It, it makes a lot of sense here. Yeah. I also did a site visit, and, and I agree. Okay. Yeah, I did reasonable. a site visit uh, as well, and yeah, I think it's consistent with other um, properties in that area. Yep. Um, I am very familiar with the lot and agree. Anyone may want to make a motion? A motion to approve with conditions one and two as written. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? A second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is that the passage or second passage? Second passage. Second passage. That's what was lightning. Okay. <laughs> That's why it's easy here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other business to come before the Board of Adjustment? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Done. Whew. Nice job. <laughs> Thank you.